What's up guys, my name is Steven Steele and welcome back to World of Tanks videos. Um, today I'm going to be showing a game in the Rudy with my friend Rogo in the Cromwell. And uh, I did a review on the Rudy, um, you can check it out on my channel, but uh, if you want the short version, basically uh, it was a really good gun, really punchy, has great uh, alpha for peeker booming and the tank uh, the tank performs decently well in, in pretty much every situation and it can have some really, really good games. It can roll with other heavies pretty well. Uh, I took a shot there just to check out the trackpad of my laptop. Uh, I tend to do that a lot just to make sure it's turned off because every now and then I accidentally touch it in the middle of a game and it would be kind of silly if I did a random shot while we were actually in, the, in a pretty difficult situation. So, yeah. So, uh... In terms of the game, it's tier 7 on the map called Prokhorovka. Pretty campy game. A pretty campy map, I would say. My friend goes uh, there. Rogo is gonna try to spot people going up to the hill or going to the city. I am going to go up on the hill, obviously. Uh, the, the Rudy is pretty good at taking shots at people for free, and the, the pen on the gun is kind of nice, so yeah. I like to take this position. Uh, for those of you wondering about what equipment I take, uh, I have gun rammer for better reload, obvious reasons. Uh, coated optics, this tank has 365 meter view range, which is pretty good. And uh, with coated optics, you can actually get like a, somewhat of a scout status, which is nice. Um, and I take ventilation because, well, there's not much better really to get. Gun lane drive is kind of not really going to be that useful in this tank, in my opinion. <laughs> So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a bit cautious here. Um, this this is a pretty good position for sniping, but you need to be careful of what's going on around you, and I don't want to have anyone get onto the hill for free. So I'm going to try and stop people from going onto the hill if we can spot them. There's the first guy who gets spotted, the E2, uh, tier six medium, just like us. I'm going to try to stop him from getting onto the hill, but uh, if he decides to back out, then I'm not gonna rush a shot at him. There's the Tog too. We are, I'm, I'm gonna get a shot later in the game at him, but uh, right now the building is in between, so I can't really shoot him. E2 disappeared, not sure where he went. Our KV-85 goes pretty aggressive and the E2 gets spotted again. There's the KV-1. I'm going to try to get a shot on the KV-1 when he dies already to our IS. Move into an aggressive position, try to get a shot at the E2, but uh, you'll see that I actually don't have a gun pressure here. It's not a big deal, the gun depression on this tank is still pretty decent, but it's not, like, really good, so you'll see me have trouble with shots like that. Here I spot the talk too. The building is in between, I tried to get a shot lower because I thought the E25 was there, but the E25 uh, turned out to be there, behind that, so... I'm going to look for a shot here. He moves forward, so I get a shot. Get nice damage into him, but uh, my ally hits him right as I hit him, so it doesn't look like I actually did the damage. You'll see at the end, uh, at the end of the play that I did. I try another shot, but the building probably took that one, so Tom still lives to see another day, which is a bit annoying. I want to kind of get rid of him from that middle, because he provides both a lot of spotting and some fire support to his allies. I try another blind shot, but uh, that was never going to hit. Now, there's the E25. I will try to get a shot at him here, but here's the issue with the Rudy's gun. You have to lead your shots very much, and uh, that's because the, the, the shell speed is not very good. So I tried to lead him there, but he turned. Uh, he decided to go forward right as I did. This shot, however, was really clean, so I guess I can't really go forward. I'm going to try and uh, wait for the E25. I want to take a shot at him. Here's my friend. He's going to move in aggressive and uh, he's going to try to spot any remaining enemies. They have six tank destroyers, by the way. That's something I wanted to say. So uh, for us to play aggressive here was kind of risky. And we, we that's why for so long we waited with an aggressive play. But we're kind of starting to think that there's not much left on this flank. Uh, so there's the E25. That shot was... To be honest, he moves back immediately, but then stops right as I shoot, and well, that's well, that was pretty unfortunate. KV3 is now in front of me. Uh, my friend found him, pretty sure, spotted him. 
He's gonna take a shot at the KP3 right as I do. There we go, he takes one, I take one, and I rid him of fire, which is pretty hilarious. But, uh, <laughs> he did not think it was hilarious, as you'll see in the chat. There it is, alright, so... My uh, friend is going to actually go forward here pretty aggressively, and there we find the Hellcat, which is, uh, turns out to be the last tank, uh, last, uh, tank that's on this uh, side, so... Yeah, I'm going to take good shots of him, but that allows my friend to live, but he is now at, uh, at a third of his health, and actually a one-shot for pretty much all those other TDs, which is not very good. Uh, he tries to spot uh, more in that area, but it turns out there's nothing there, so the replay is going to be... Uh, gonna be... I have to, I'm gonna have to fast forward it a bit here, so... There we go, our IS is still on full health as you can see there, and uh, right now we're not doing really well. Our tanks on the other flank are getting wrecked. There's two KV-1s left, which seems like we're doing a good job, but... Uh, yeah, we got two heavies there, but those are two tier 5 heavies, and they've got a bunch of tier 7 tanks left. So the KV-1s are not gonna hold out for very long. Which is quite unfortunate really, but... Uh, yeah, that's nothing to be done about it. I spot the E25. He's showing me a little bit of his ass. I try to get a shot, but uh, he immediately moves forward. He turns around, which allows my friend to shoot him, and then the IS to blind shoot him. And as he does that, uh, we see the wreck up here, right there, which is nice. But uh, as you'll see, our IS here suddenly gets completely wrecked by the Sturia Mule. And that's quite a big issue. Um, as he dies to the... Oh, well, he actually dies to the Hellcat. Well, there's Stura Mule. I'm going to aim for him. Pretty long. Get a nice, nice damage roll. Nice shot as well. He's hanging around a bit, so I tried to get one last shot, but I, I managed to hit uh, the building with a very strange hitbox, so that was kind of uh, too bad. Now, if you recall, there was there were two heavy tanks over there, the IS and the Churchill Mark 1. Those are the only two it could have been. So I am going to try and use these bushes, as you can see from this angle. There's not much they can see. I'm going to try to use these bushes to spot those two guys. And of course, the rock here provides great cover as well. My friend is on pretty low health still, so I don't want him to take any risks if possible. And now we spot the Churchill Mark 1, and that was not my spotting, I'm pretty sure that was the Arty or something. I try a shot here, but I get pretty damn unlucky, and I I see him turn, and I realize I'm getting spotted here, my sixth sense goes off. So I shoot. Uh, I do hit him, but then the Nashorn pops up, and now me and my friend are going to get a shot at his Nashorn. As you'll see, there, his uh, health gets pretty greatly diminished, and now... I am going to look for cover behind this building, and this once again is a really strong middle of the map position. Um, with the rock there, and the building here, I'm pretty certain none of them can hit me. Maybe the IS if he's still hanging around there somewhere. But as you can see, we're getting capped. So that means the IS has to be in the base. He's the only one that could be there. There's the Churchill Mark 1. Nasser was there. Stur Emil was somewhere over there, but I'm in bush cover, so I'm hoping he can't see me. So that's my... my line of thought right now um, which is why this position in, uh, in this situation is really strong and as I sit behind his bushes the Sturia Emil gets spotted I managed to spot him so I'm going to take a shot at him here get a really low roll but hey what can you do about it we are going to completely wreck him with uh, our combined DPM and then the Hellcat pops up and this this was pretty lucky I cannot deny it I was lucky as hell now we spot the church of Mark 1 we have a pretty clean shot, but I shoot a bit too much at his hull, which is my bad, honestly. The Church Mark 1's turret, turret is really weak, so I decided to take the shot at the turret afterwards, after realizing the mistake. Um, although, even then, the shot, the first shot was pretty unlucky. It could have definitely still went in, but uh, yeah, too bad. So I move uh, forward here. As you can see, the base is getting capped, and as I said, indeed, it was the IS all along. It couldn't really have been anyone else, so... I'm going to reset the cap by shooting him. I take a shot at his side, but I managed to bounce. I'm pretty sure that was an unlucky penetration roll, but hey. Friend keeps him spotted, so I keep getting shot, so that shot barely hit him. As you can see, it's got this uh, track actually, which means uh, I got a pretty lucky hit, but then again, that shot completely went nowhere. You know, I was fully aimed at him, but hey. My friend keeps him spotted, trolls him around a bit, and I finish one with a shot in the side of his turret. So right now I'm at 5 kills, my friend's at 2 kills, and we're at a lot of damage right now. 
Now, there's only a NAS horn left and uh, the, their artillery, and there's our artillery, so my friend just needs to survive right now. He's 85 health, but uh, I tell him right now, he's best to support uh, fire. As I look for the NAS horn, I'm going there, but the NAS horn turns out to be all the way over there. Our artillery misses his shell, but our artillery is actually going to go full rat mode and actually take out most of the nest horns remaining health, meaning he's now a one-shot for me. My friend's going to join me here, but I tell him um, right now that it's probably best to go to the enemy base. Uh, the the nest horn is a one-shot for me and we need to fight the artillery as soon as possible. That's basically my line of thought. So I'm going to go into this position, find the nest horn. This is a pretty easy shot. There's nothing he's going to do about it. I get spotted here, which is quite logical considering I hit him in the back from like 20 meters, but look at look here right now. Here I get spotted again. As you can see, my sixth sense goes on a second time. So I realize, considering that my friend just went this route, the only place the enemy could be is somewhere between those bushes on the other side of this hill. So I move into this position to make sure the RT can't, uh, can't uh, shoot me and then I get unspotted. My friend's gonna go to the cap just to make sure that we can always cap and then I spot him here. I take a, I take a completely ridiculous shot but then again uh, I, I had nothing to lose there. He misses so for me this is just uh, target practice and I get a very, very free shot at him there. Pretty low roll but I can't complain. I'm going to give the kill to my friend so he has three kills. We have the brothers in arms medal. And there we go, that's the end of the carry that we did together. So yeah, that was it for that game, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I mean, uh, the game, of course. Uh, the, for, for the end plates, uh, 2.9k damage, and for my friend, 1.9k damage. Uh, both of us had an ace tanker, he got a spotter medal. I got myself a top gun, high caliber, defender, and... Uh, we got the brothers in arms obviously so yeah that felt pretty epic that game and I wanted to showcase that just to show you the power of this tank and to show you that I'm still going strong with it uh, I'm almost at two marks of excellence so that uh, that should speak for itself this tank is really really good if you can play this this tank is super good so still 100% recommend it like I did in the review so uh, yeah but that was the game I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you on the next one